Okay, so let me then begin. Okay. So this is a program okay, that starting from string field theory action, we have to describe how to compute the 1 pi effective action, then we have to find its extremum, okay. then find solutions to the linearized equations of motion around the extremum, okay. and then use LSD to compute S matrix. So let me begin with the first step, okay, one PI effective action. Okay. So we will denote by now a different curly bracket, okay, now it is a single bracket. Okay. This by definition will be the 1 pi will be the let us see 1 pi amplitude of a 1 to n all belonging to h minus 1 plus h minus half computed from string field theory. Okay, when you say when you compute from string field theory, you just sum over Feynman diagrams. Okay. But you do not sum over all possible Feynman diagrams, you sum over only one particle irreducible Feynman diagrams, okay. those which cannot be cut into two pieces by cutting a single line. Okay. Now, we have already discussed that each Feynman diagram okay, gives you integral over some region of the moduli space. Okay. So, obviously, when you sum over a subset of the Feynman diagrams, what we will end up with is integral over a subspace of the moduli space again, okay, but it is a different subspace now. Okay. So, this then has the following structure, okay. this will have the structure of the original curly brackets. Okay, again the integral of a correlation function of the a i is on the Riemann surface okay, with some universal operators inserted, okay, but integrated over a different region which I am calling R g n. Okay. So, this R g n now is a sum is coming from the sum of the various regions that are covered by various Feynman diagrams, okay, all of which are 1 pi. Is this clear? Okay, so, you can think of this in terms of uh, integral over Riemann surface, but also you can think of this as some more Feynman diagrams. Okay. For example, if you are trying to compute say 4 point function, we will include diagrams like this. These are all 1 pi diagrams, right. So, you sum over all of these. Okay, and evaluate to get to this form. Okay, each of these diagrams we express as an integral over the Riemann surface or over the moduli space of Riemann surface, and then you combine the take the union of all these regions that are associated with these different diagrams. So, yes. You can sum every diagram, or you you, you go to uh, loop expansion to sum order in this. Uh, yeah. So you always do loop expansion. So whatever I am doing here, you can also you do up to a given genus, right? not every diagram. Right? So, because you, to do a computation up to a given genus, you only need information up to that genus. And then what, what is the physical meaning of the parameter of the loop expansion? Like in quantum field theory, it is h bar, so when you go loop, you add quantum effects. Yes. So, here 
I mean, there, is, there are already H bar corrections or G, G string plays a role of H bar. Here, even at the tree level, or the original action has H bar correction, right, which is somewhat unusual. And this is a reflection of the fact that the path integral measure is not invariant under gauge transformation. Okay? So these H bar corrections that you have at the, in the action essentially compensates for the non-invariance of the path integral measure. Okay? So that's the interpretation of why you have already H bar corrections in the, in the path integral measure. One PI action, of course, always has H bar corrections. Right? Because you always include diagrams like this in the definition of the 1PI action. So you, you still interpret loops as a quantum correction in, in the original string model. Exactly. That's right. Okay. So this vortex itself, this vortex itself can already have some H-bar corrections. Right? But this is on top of that. This is, these are different from the ones that are already included here. Okay. Okay. And you take the union of all of these regions. Now one can show This we can show using the main identity. Okay. In fact, as I said that to prove all of these relations, you never have to know anything about string theory. Once I have given the action and the main identity, okay, it is just simple algebraic manipulation okay, and I have also given the propagator. Okay. From there, you can just do algebraic manipulation without any reference to human surface to prove this relation. Are there questions? Okay, in fact, I can leave it as an exercise. It's somewhat of a challenging exercise, but it can be done without reference to human surface altogether. Okay, just by analyzing Feynman diagrams, okay, we can prove this. Okay, so from this we can calculate now the one pi effective action. Okay. And let me remind you the significance of the 1 pi effective action okay. and that is that Is this familiar to everybody? 
that once you have the 1 pi effective action, this is a field theory result, that once you have the 1 pi effective action, okay, then you just compute 3 amplitudes from this 1 pi effective action and that gives a full set of amplitudes in the theory, okay, because all the loops have already been included in the definition of the 1 pi vortices. Okay, so, now you only have to do 3. This one you can now show has a genuine gauge impedance, it actually is symmetric invariant under a set of gauge transformations, okay, because now we do not have to worry about the measure, okay. you are just computing three amplitudes, right? no path integral measure problem is involved. Okay. So, this exercise okay, that S 1 p i is invariant under Okay, where the square bracket have to define. Is this statement clear? Okay, that you take this action, okay, vary psi and psi field according to these relations, lambda and lambda tilde again are uh, Grassmann odd variables, okay, and use this identity, okay, which is which in turn is derived from the main identity that you had to start with, okay, and you can show that the uh, action is unchanged under these variations. Okay, so, these are the gauge invariances of the 1 pi effective action okay. and as I said that now we do not have to worry about the non invariance of the measure because this is we only have to compute 3 level amplitudes with this. Okay, are there questions? Yes. Yes, so these are actually the one point function. The, uh, so, this is already legend that transformed, right. So, if we were thinking in terms of that, you first have the generating functional of Green's function, then you have to get generic legend that transformed, right. That is one way of defining one pi effective action, but that is entirely equivalent to summing over Feynman diagrams, which cannot be cut into two parts by cutting a line, right. So, it is exactly the same yes. philosophy, yeah. No, but there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, okay. As you know, the legend that when you took the legend that transform, the they are not the same fields as the original fields, right. But they can be labeled by exactly the same set of indices, right. So, so you think of this exactly in that spirit, right. You consider the one-pi effective action in terms of these new variables, which are the legend that transforms of the corresponding currents, yeah. So, now you basically do a standard field theory, right. I mean, yeah. Okay, so then you regard this as a new action and compute three diagrams with this action. Okay, so next task is to find the vacuum solution. Because you see typically 
this interaction term of the 1 pi effective action okay, also has one point function. Okay. There is a term involved this is linear in psi. Okay. So, psi equal to 0 is not a solution to the equations of motion right you cannot expand around psi equal to 0. Okay. So, what you should do is to uh, first look for a solution to these equations of motion that you derive from here okay, and then expand around that solution. Okay. So, the task then this is step 2 look for vacuum solution okay, which I will call psi v. Okay. Now, because you are looking for vacuum solution of course, there are some special properties that you would demand okay. that first it must be from the NS sector. Okay. We want a bosonic solution not a fermionic solution okay. and this should have for example, a 0 momentum okay, because vacuum typically is translation invariant. Okay. So, you look for a translation invariant vacuum solution. So, you take a 0 momentum you put the 0 momentum constant. Okay. Now, in the in a sector of course, G is identity okay. so that makes life much simpler maybe I should write down the equations of motion first. So, the equations of motion So, we look for the vacuum solution in the NS sector we can choose psi tilde equal to psi equal to psi v. Okay. This means that this equation is automatically satisfied because G is identity in the Nebuchadnezzar sector okay, or in H minus 1. So, this equation is automatically satisfied okay. and this equation tells us Okay, so, this is the equation that you have to solve to find the vacuum okay. and I will not have time to descri describe this procedure, but let me just state that there exist systematic Okay, so, there is basically an iterative scheme by which you can determine uh, psi v okay. and in any given problem you only want to determine it up to a given order in string coupling because you want to do computation up to a given genus order. So, this iterative procedure can be used to determine it to uh, any power in gs. Okay. So, once we have found the vacuum solution, okay. we are supposed to take the original action and expand around psi v okay. and that action is guaranteed to have no one point function. Okay. So, now when you set the field to 0, you really have a solution. Okay. So, this is like expanding around the correct extremum. Okay. 
And if you recall, this is necessary to solve the tadpole problem, right? The massless tadpoles basically represented the fact that you have not expanded around the correct extremum. Okay, the vacuum has gotten shifted, but you have not taken that into account. Once you determine the new vacuum solution, okay, then that problem will be automatically solved because there will be no tadpoles anymore. Is this point clear? Okay, that this is the reason why you have to actually expand around the extremum, okay, to get rid of the tadpoles. So we will define phi as psi minus psi v and phi tilde as psi tilde minus psi v and expand S1 pi in powers of phi and phi tilde. Okay. And this is what one finds. Again, this is a straightforward exercise. Okay, I have to explain some of the symbols. Okay, some new symbols have come. You can see K is something that I have not defined before. Okay. And this curly bracket with the double prime is again something that I have not defined before. Okay, everything else is defined. Okay. And notice that this time sum starts from n equal to 3 to infinity. There is no linear term. Okay, and that is simply because we have expanded around the next remote. So let me give the definitions. Is there a misprint in the kinetic term uh, for the second part of the kinetic term? Uh, restricted to? Is there a misprint? You wrote phi triddle C0 minus G phi. C0 minus sorry, G sorry, phi. this is Q. Thank you. This is a QB. Okay, so the, here are the definitions. This is 0 for N equal to 1 and 2 and this is K is an operator okay this is lot of definitions but the this Step is straightforward. You just take the original action, okay, substitute for psi as psi v plus phi and psi tilde as psi v plus phi tilde and just expand the original action and just reorganize the terms into 
uh, these uh, various definitions. Okay, and that's what we, uh, one finds here. Okay. So, this is the now correct action to start doing perturbation expansion. Okay. Because this action has no tad poles, okay, no one-point function. So, the perturbation expansion is well defined for uh, this action. Okay. But before we start uh, giving the Feynman diagrams, okay, it will be useful to find the mass spectrum. Okay. What is the spectrum? What are the masses of the uh, theory? Because those are the ones which will determine what momentum you should put on the external lines. Okay, and then we will derive the Feynman rules. Okay. So, to determine the mass spectrum, Now, the linear energy equation of phi tilde is still a trivial field okay? because as you have seen that the phi tilde equations of motion okay, really does not do very much. Okay? It just gives a set of free fields which are completely decoupled. So, really we should focus on the linear energy equation of motion for phi. So, exercise again. equation of motion for phi okay. to do this you have to again first derive both the equations of motion for phi tilde and phi and then take appropriate linear combinations to decouple okay. you can remember that that is what we did earlier and you have to do the same thing here. Okay. So, equation of motion for phi okay, has the structure of q b hat phi plus order phi square equal to 0. What is QB hat? Is this statement clear? Okay, you just derive you vary this action with respect to phi tilde and phi, okay. pick up the linear parts and then take appropriate linear combination and that will to basically that, that is necessary to decouple the phi tilde and phi equations and you will find that the phi equation is given by this. Now, you also need the linearized gauge transformations, right? The, the, the original 1 pi effective action had a gauge symmetry, okay? In fact, a pair of gauge symmetries generated by lambda and lambda tilde. So, that of course will be there even for this in this new variables, right? Because it is the same action after all, okay? So, linearized gauge transformation of phi. takes the form delta phi as q b hat lambda plus higher order terms. Okay. And now a very important identity okay, which you can prove based on the identities that I have already given okay, that q b hat square is 0. Okay. So, this says that the q b hat, okay, this is playing the role of quantum corrected BRST operator. Okay. 
Okay. Because you see in the classical theory, okay, the gauge transformations of the were of the form delta phi equal to q b lambda plus something, some nonlinear terms. Okay. And the equations of motion were q b on the field plus nonlinear terms equal to 0. Okay. Those have been now replaced by q b hat okay. and q b hat is still nilpotent. Okay. So, this means that the physical states, okay, quantum corrected physical states okay, are now in one to one correspondence with the cohomology of q b hat. Right, because the quantum state, the uh, quantum corrected states. Now that we have in one pi effective action, we are only doing classical analysis with this. Tree level means classical. Okay, so the solution to these, okay, whatever mass spectrum it gives, is the correct mass spectrum, the full quantum corrected mass spectrum of the theory. Okay, that's how you make use of one particular irreducible effective action in a normal quantum field theory. Okay, so we solve this, but now we have to use the fact that there is a gauge equivalence. Okay, so, not all of these are uh, physical states, some of them may be pure gauge. Okay. So, we just determine solutions to this up to the equivalence that phi and phi plus q b hat lambda are the same states. Okay. So, if, if this occurs, at k square plus m square equal to 0, okay. then m is a renormalized mass. Is this clear? Okay, so, you basically try to look for solutions to q b hat phi equal to 0 up to this equivalence. Okay. For most values of momentum, you will find that the only solutions are those which are already of the form q b hat lambda. Okay, so, those are, these are not very useful, right? these are pure gauge. Okay. But for certain momenta satisfying special relations, you will find that you can actually get solutions to q b hat lambda equal to 0, okay, which are not sorry q b hat phi equal to 0 which are not of this kind okay. and those you identify as the physical states and the corresponding values of minus k square you identify as the mass square, okay. but this is now the quantum corrected mass square of the state. Okay. Again this is somewhat abstract, but one can actually use this to give an algorithm for computing m square to any given order in perturbation theory. So, there exist algorithm ok basically the, the basic idea is the same ok, but you do not try to look for a solution at one go you try to solve these equations in a genus expansion. Are there questions? Yes. Okay, suppose we compute this m square for yes. the pipe state. Uh, this you interpret it as, as a mass of what? Of, what, uh, of, a, of a particle, of an asymptotic state, of yes, that is right. So yeah, some mass of some string state, okay. right. If you had done this at uh, uh, order g s to the 0, you will recover the usual string spectrum, right, because then q b hat will be the same as q b, right. But as you do quantum corrections, q b gets corrected, right, and so you get corrections to the original mass spectrum of the string theory. Yes, these are only perturbative states. So, the whole thing is done only at the perturbative level, yes. Okay. 
Okay, so once we have the 1 pi effective action expanded around the vacuum, okay, we can compute the propagator, renormalized propagator. Okay, we will still use single gauge which is B naught plus phi equal to 0 okay, and I will only give the phi phi propagator. Okay, we can of course calculate all the other components also, but because phi is the only interacting field, okay, this is the only propagator that we need for our Feynman diagram calculation. Okay. So, this has the following structure. And then we can put a delta L0 minus 0. Okay. So, what is different here is this additional piece over here. Okay. This is the quantum curve, effect of the quantum correction. Okay. So, earlier it was just L0 plus inverse, now that has gotten shifted. Okay. And it is because of this shift, okay, this is in fact a different way of calculating the mass spectrum. Okay. Because of this shift, Okay, now, the poles of this propagator will no longer be when L0 plus vanishes, okay, but when this operator has 0 eigenvalue. Okay, so, this is the uh, calculation based on looking for the poles of the propagator. Okay. The only problem in this way of doing it is that this is already a gauge fixed propagator. Right. And as you know, once you have a gauge fixed propagator, not all the poles represent physical states. Right. Some of them may be just spurious uh, gauge modes, okay, which um, appears to be physical because you have fixed a gauge. Okay. So, if we use this trick to look for poles in the propagator, okay, we have to uh, 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 exercise some extra care to identify which of these poles actually represent physical masses and which are spurious. Okay. If I mean, in a, this, this happens in a normal conventional field theory also. Okay. If you use, for example, a, take a gauge theory and use some alpha gauge, okay. not the Feynman gauge, some uh, generic alpha gauge okay, and calculate the propagator. You will find that it has of course poles at the right place which has a physical sp uh, spectrum, but it also has poles which are alpha dependent, okay, which are gauge dependent uh, uh, poles and they are not physical. Okay. So, the same thing happens here as well. Okay. So, once you have the propagator, Okay. Then we calculate okay. again this is exactly what you do in normal field theory. Okay. So, this is truncated Green's function of n of shell states a 1 to n. Truncated means that we have removed external propagators. This is uh, familiar to everybody, right? If you take an if you have an action, that truncated Green's function means that you calculate the Green's function, but don't include the external propagators. Okay, so for the external states, you just don't use, use this factor. Green's function on that end, the full Green's function will have for every external leg, you have a factor like this. Okay. So why is this truncated Green's function useful? Okay. It is useful because from this we can calculate the S matrix just by setting all the states on shell. Okay, where on shell now means that it has to be solution to this q b hat. So, on shell states will mean q b hat a equal to 0. This is on shell condition. 
Okay. So, if you want to go from here to the S matrix, all you have to do is that you have to set these external states to be on shell, okay, invariant under QB hat. Okay. And at the same time, you have to divide by the wave function and Amazon factors. Right? That is the LSD procedure. Okay, that take the Green's function, remove all the external propagators, but keep square roots of the wave function and Amazon factors, and that is what is supposed to compute this matrix. This is familiar. Okay. This is again what you do in normal quantum field theories, okay. and that is the procedure you will be using to compute this matrix from this gamma. Okay, and the gamma itself is calculated by just summing over Feynman diagrams. Okay. Feynman diagrams with the vortices which are the these double prime vortices and propagator which is this. So, you compute gamma Okay, these are the external states of that I am entered a given vortex. Okay, so, this is the, the representation of the vortex. So, if you have a, a vortex on the internal line with this a 1, a 2 up to n as external states to the vortex, then this is the expression for the vortex. Okay, so, for every internal vortex, you have an expression of this kind. Then for propagators, you use this delta f okay, and then take the product and sum over all Feynman diagrams. Okay. But again let me remind you that you are only supposed to calculate only three level Feynman diagrams, no loops are necessary because you are working with one PI effective action. Now let me give some odd identities and maybe that will be the last topic. So, what identities? Okay. Again, these are straightforward algebra based on what I have already given you. Okay. The first is a very useful word identity involving the propagator. Okay. So, Q B hat delta F C 0 minus Okay, this you can easily check. So, Q B tilde I have to define. So, let me remind you Q B hat was Q B plus G K. Okay. Q B tilde is essentially its conjugate. Okay. This is Q B plus K G. Okay, it just comes in the reverse order. Okay, and that happens here because Q B tilde is multiplying delta F from the right. Okay. So, k should first act on delta f. So, that is the idea both for this term and this term k is next to delta f. Okay. And then using this word identity okay, and then the identity that we have already uh, uh, discussed for the 1 pi vortex, one can prove another very useful identity for the Green's function now, truncated Green's function. Which is that sum over i
ok. So, the way you derive this is that you think of gamma as a collection of Feynman diagrams ok. This q b hat is acting in turn on all the external lines ok, but you can also include extra terms where the q b hat acts on the internal lines and use the identity for the uh, uh, bracket that I uh, gave you earlier ok. And then you compensate for the extra terms by using this identity ok. So, this again I leave as an exercise ok as I said it is it just involves algebra you do not really need to know anything about uh, 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 Riemann surfaces or uh, string theory very much ok. Just based on the algebraic identities that you have already derived you can derive this. Okay. But this of course, has a very useful consequence right because what it says is that if we now consider a amplitude s gamma okay, of the following form a 1 to a n and q b hat lambda okay, with q b a i equal to 0 ok which means all the external states are on shell for a 1 to n ok and the final one ok is a pure gauge ok because this is q b hat lambda. So, can you see what the answer for this should be using the identity that I gave above. So, this is equal to what? If you use this, should be 0, right? Because you basically apply use this identity take the a i's ok all but n minus 1 or let us apply this identity for n equals to n plus 1 ok. So, take all of them to be physical which are analyzed by q b hat one of them is q b hat on something ok. So, this according to this if we take this plus other terms where q b hat act in turn on a 1 a 2 up to n that sum is 0. Right, that is what this is telling you, but all the other terms where q b hat acts on a 1 or q b hat acts on a 2 or where q b hat acts on a 3 those are 0 anyway because those are 0 because of this relation ok. So, this says that this is 0 ok and this has the following physical significance this tells us that if we consider an S matrix ok of n on shell states ok and one pure gauge state which of course, is also on shell because pure gauge states automatically satisfy q b hat on them them equal to 0 ok. So, in S matrix with n on shell states and one pure gauge state is automatically 0 ok. So, this is the statement of decoupling of pure gauge states from the S matrix. Is this statement clear ok and we will see that this relation here that we derived okay, this will be crucial for proof of unitarity ok. So, tomorrow we will discuss how to prove unitarity based on this formalism ok and it will basically consist of two steps ok. In the first step we will prove unitarity by assuming that all states in the Siegel gauge are uh, physical ok that for all poles of the propagator that we see in the Siegel gauge represent physical states ok. Then the proof of unitarity is quite straightforward ok. But of course, we know that not all of these states are uh, uh, physical some of them are pure gauge states ok. So, in the second step we have to prove that all the extra contribution from the states which are not physical they vanish. Okay. And that is where we are going to use this identity over here ok. So, tomorrow we will discuss in detail how to prove unitarity in this formalism ok. So, I think I will stop here today.
for the Psy tilde. That's right. And then, obviously, you found that Psy tilde was just a free field. Yes. But I, I guess I didn't uh, see the physical reason for why there should be no interaction terms for Psy tilde in the action. Well, the point is, if you, one way to say it is if you try to introduce interaction terms for psi tilde, you break gauge invariance. Okay? So, the gauge invariance in some sense dictates that there should be no interaction term. But also physically it is clear that it should, there should be no interaction terms because if, if, there, if psi tilde was a genuine interacting field, then there will be doubling of the degrees of freedom. Right? Then it will certainly not describe string theory. Right? So, if you are trying to describe string theory whose spectrum we already know, we also know that psi itself contains the full spectrum of string theory. Right? So, you should not have this additional uh, uh, field as physical, uh, creating physical particles, but you need this field to be able to write down an action. Okay? You can easily convince yourself that without this field, it is not possible to write an action. And there is now also no way to integrate it out, now that you have the action? Well, the point is if you try to integrate it out, you get a non-local action. Right. Right? Because it has to do with the fact that this G that we introduce or the, chi or the zero mode of the picture changing operator, that is not invertible. See, the point is that the proper, if you remember we had a matrix like this in the expression for the kinetic term and we inverted it and that gave us 0, 1, 1 g. Okay. The problem is that if we try to get a g in the propagator without this extra field, okay, we need a kinetic term which has g inverse right? and g does not have an inverse. Right? There are states on which G vanishes. Okay? So, that is why you could not write down a kinetic term which has G inverse. Okay? And this is a trick which allows you to solve that problem that you actually get a G in the inverse okay, without writing a G in the original matrix. Okay? And you can trace it to the difficulty that we have normally in writing an action for type 2B string theory or type 2B supergravity. Right? I mean, it looks uh, 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 somewhat different, but using this trick you can in fact actually write down an action for type 2 supergravity as well. Okay? This introduces an extra free field which completely decouples from the theory.